Yo, what's good today? I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make a simple Roblox PFP in under eight minutes. So yeah, let's jump right into this. So a few things you need to know. There's actually gonna be timestamps for like each part, so you can skip and yeah, you know. And I'm not gonna be showing you like the basic of Blender, so you must know that. Alright, and let's jump right into this. So the first thing I start before I even start to do the PFP itself is. Make sure my avatar is set up. So by clicking one of the arms then going to shading tab, as you can see, this is my node setup. I have this hue saturation value. All it does is makes it look less blend when it comes to the skin. As you can see, 0.2 or anything over it will kind of change it, but I keep it at 0.2, just like that. Everything here, you can copy my settings, but if you have your own settings, it's up to you. Here are my settings, you can copy them. Here's, a, here's an even better screenshot. So yeah. After that, go back to default. And go to composite. Now, if you need to use Blender 2.83, I'm pretty sure, plus for this. So click Shift plus A and add a denoise node. Just like that. And return back to the default. After you're back on the default, what we're actually going to start doing is putting the character itself now. So by clicking the torso and if you use matte rig or paint rig I'm pretty sure. If you can do this, this is all you need. So it's all about posing the character right now. So I'm just going to mute myself for now. Also don't be afraid to use reference from Google, it's completely fine. Like you should use it a reference if you don't know how to pose. So yeah. Alright, after you have your pose done, all you need to do is add a camera. Oh actually before we even do that. Let's actually do our lighting. So by going to render view. Okay, wait, no. Go to sampling. Change the render to 25 or 10. If you do 25, you'll get better results. And I'll show you that in a minute. Viewport 1. After that, denoising, make sure when the end viewport is off. And make sure your background is transparent so that it will look like this by the end. Alright, good. After you did, you did that, what we're going to do now is the lighting itself. So, if I go ahead and go to surface, I'm going to render view. I always keep it white bright. It's just my way. And I enable ambient occlusion and lower it, lower it down a bit. Just about like that, yeah. Go back to solid mode. And add a camera by clicking Shift plus A, and clicking zero on your number pad. Another thing that I found that I find very useful is by going to Reference, Key Map, and then typing View Navigation. After this pops up, all you need to do is click Shift plus F, and whenever you're in Blender and you click Shift plus F, you'll be able to actually fly slash walk by controlling it using WASD space. And your score will to speed up. So it should speed up work a bit. After you're done with the lighting, all you need to do is set the size, which is 800 by 800. And just position it right on the face. Actually, you want to show a little bit of the body, just like that. I'm gonna have them. You can change the pose a bit if you don't like the way that it looks. Just about like that. Make sure the head is simple. And after you're happy with the way it looks, what that's left to do is actually render it. So I'll be back once it's done. I 
Okay, after it's done rendering, remember the thing you did with the denoise. It should automatically denoise the entire scene for you, which saves up a bunch of time. So all that's left to do is save it and move it up to Photopia, Photoshop, Game, whatever you use. So yeah, let's jump right into Photopia. After you finish rendering and moving it to Photopia, Photoshop, whatever you have, all that's left to do is add a background, maybe protocols if you want to, but this is going to be a basic, basic, actual basic PFP. So what I like to do is select a sh rectangle, rectangular, sorry, and just make it the right size, just like that, and change the color to actually match the avatar itself. So let's go for... Yeah, I'm liking this. You know what? I'm actually liking this. Now, what I like to do is convert this um, la layer into a what is it called again? Smart object. Then go to filter, add a blur, gusher blur. Seven point two is good. Click this little white box, box. Sorry. Click B for brush, and right click. I'm pretty sure this is. Bring up the size and hardness to zero. Now what you need to do is just press oh and make sure you're using the color black. Just like that. And just tap once at the place you don't want the blood to actually get to. You know just the, the face a little bit and you can lower down the flow to like make it softer. That way it won't have that much impact. And boom, just like that. And if if you actually did a mistake, you can actually swap to white and with one tap again, the blur is black. Uh, <laughs> back. And oh yeah, and don't forget about the flow. And yeah, just like that is back. So after you have the blur on, the layer you have add another layer on top and make it clipping mask. After this clipping mask, choose the color red. You can use eye to use the eye drop. And while using the this brush, the original one, zero hardness, just tap at the sides. Just small taps like this. And set it to overlay, or mainly just play with it. Here, I'm gonna go for a linear dodge and just lower the fill. As you can see, already starts to look better. And double tap this empty space of the avatar, and it should bring up the layer style. Over here, you can add a color overlay, which I always set it to be not that dark, but a good, um, a good looking color. Let's say gray, and I will set it to overlay, and I lower the opacity. Then in a glow, I don't recommend, but you could. But then once you add it, you have this like weird line, which is a reason I don't recommend it. Add a inter shadow and just lower the opacity to it too. A little bit of difference, but it's for the best. And auto glow, I like to always add it sometimes. But well, for the sake of this video, I would set it to red. And the opacity for this. Actually, no, the size, we're gonna bring it down. And yeah, just like this. And for the gradient overlay, we need to know where the light is coming from. Wait, I forgot I didn't use some. Right. It doesn't actually matter, you can choose like your favorite place. You can actually play around with the angle and the opacity. So for me this actually looks good. Go to opacity and click OK. After you have that done, you can add another clipping mask, like a new layer. And let's do it like this, let's add a white. And tap the sides again with zero hardness on the brush. And set it to maybe soft light. Lower the fill. And just like that, you 
you can add another clipping mask if you have glasses go to size and set it to overlay okay now you're gonna make a group by clicking Control plus G and at the bottom here you should select this word icon what you want to do now is add a vibrance to bump it up load opacity for this one now click that word icon again click curve and just play with it either you want it dark or bright it's actually up to you i'm liking dark so i'm gonna just play around with it there's no specific way just so you know just make your own technique and develop from there actually let me bump the fill up again and add a color balance red yeah sure that's the theme of course blue no i'm gonna set it to zero oops sorry for that background um and is there anything else we can add um yeah exposure why not bump it up by a little bit because yeah it's very sensitive you can load it offset if i could get it right okay you know what fine i'll just load a fill and boom Smart difference, but it's for the best. And yeah, just like that, you make a simple, simple PFP, and less than I think it's like um, ten minutes, maybe eleven. So yeah, if you enjoy, follow our socials. Peace out, and yeah, see you guys next time.